Mod Organizer's Overwrite folder is a source of confusion and frustration for new users, and a great tool for those who learn how to use it and keep up with it. What is it? How do you use it? And when? Welcome to Gamer Poets and to Modding My Way. First of all, you aren't doing any work in this video, so take your hands off the mouse and keyboard, digest what you can, sit back and relax, pause when needed. You got this. When you mod games, you are altering or adding to game files. Bethesda, at least for Elder Scrolls and Fallout, store these files in three locations. My games folder and the actual game folder, neither of which concern us today. And within the game folder is the third location, data. When you install mods with other mod managers, they put the files or the hard links to the modded files in here for you. That's why we use mod managers to better help us manage our mods. Mod Organizer, however, is designed to do this while also keeping the data folder completely clean and free of mods and changes. It does this through a virtual file system that it loads into the game on launch. What other mod manager users may not realize is that some mods and modding apps generate files on their own when the game or app launches. MO2 users know this because that is the entire purpose of the MO2 Overwrite Mod folder located at the bottom of your asset load order. Overwrite catches the files that are generated by mods and apps to continue to keep the game's data folder untouched. That's it. That's all it does. Here are some examples of mods that generate files and what to do with them. Power of 3's Tweaks for Skyrim. Install the mod. Launch the game. Close it. Open Overwrite, and here's its any file. All you do is drag and drop it into the mods folder. Done. Finish. Run the app from within MO2. Create your patch. Close. All of the files that Finis created, instead of being dumped into the game's data folder, are caught by Overwrite as you see here. So what do I do? I close the window, right-click Overwrite, Create a mod, name it so I know what it is, place it right after Finis since Finis came first and its output came second. Activate it, done. Last example, Xedit. Launch the app, load all of your mods in, close the app, open overwrite. Xedit has generated a cache folder. This is so that Xedit runs faster on consecutive launches. Close the window, right-click Overwrite, name it accordingly. Its load order doesn't matter as it doesn't affect anything in the game, but I place mine at the very top so that it's easier to find. Now, Xedit may generate additional files for a cache as you add more mods. However, the way that MO2 works is that it will recognize that you created this new mod for Xedit's output, and all future cache output should automatically be placed here for you bypassing Overwrite altogether. And if it doesn't, just drag and drop the new files into the cache folder. This is why you don't install 100 mods at once, among various other reasons. You don't want mod files being dumped into here together and mixed up with little way of determining what mods generate them. Drag and drop when appropriate, create a new mod when needed, title them accordingly. Happy modding. Hey there, folks. I am just waking up and I'm going to finish the thumbnail for the video that you just finished watching and get this thing uploaded so you can have already seen it. And then I'm off to figure out what the next video is going to be. Thank you for all of your support. Thank you for being here and hanging out with me. I'll see you soon.